September 4th, 2024. Uh, PM. Uh, roll call. Is there any Jillian Morton? Okay. Lawrence Perry present. And Amy Gibbons. Uh, first uh, on the agenda is um, discussion of Buffalo Bodum 711 tobacco violation appeal. I have heard that we may need to. Yeah, we did not get confirmation that they would be here today. So. Well, we could put that in, unless someone's there already. We can put this toward the end and otherwise the next meeting. Sure. Okay. Um, next is the Chester and Buffalo vote regarding 89 permit on the rent request. Is anyone here for that? Is it? We got the. Uh, Patrick, McDonald, uh, would you like to? Absolutely. Speak on it? Where are you? Uh, if he needs to speak, he comes in, we're still okay. And then we have to move Um, so what we're dealing with is another one of our postage stamp blocks um, in the Shangri-La area. Um, so it's usually pretty good up there. We don't generally have any problems with those. Um, I don't have any issues with the variances as requested, um, but there are some board requirements that need to be met either at the end or beforehand um, as far as the RLS stamp goes for the board requirement. So I have and specifically those requirements were anything as far as bearing to go within the back limits they require an hour. And when, yeah, why was the deed restriction recorded ahead of time? Um, would you like to present yourself as speak up on the uh, I am uh, representing uh, 89 Plymouth Ave along with my uh, colleague Sandy Keys, and uh, I'd like to start off with a question. Uh, is an RLS stamp required from a distance from a structure to a septic facility? The floor's requirement is anything within anything under whatever your standard setback is. So if it's a property line that's within five feet, if it's a house within five feet. That's just the board. Okay. That board's requesting that standard. Because the Board of Registration usually requires uh, a land surveying stamp if you're doing any measurements to a property line, whether it's a setback requirement or not. Um, so that being said, um, I'd like to have Sandy go through the history of the project and uh, that'll be available for questions. I'd be so Sandy, you unmute. unmute yourself. There you go. All right, I'm having terrible sound problems here, so I'll do the best I can. And please, um, if you've got any questions about what I cite here, uh, by all means speak. Um, what we have here is a septic repair on of another tiny lot in Shangri-La, which is 60 feet by 100 and existing. Um, I, I think every, does everybody hear her well? Her way to turn up the sound. Uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. I don't know if it's on your end, but on our end. Might be ours. Sorry, Sandy, it's a new uh, AV system in the room. They, they changed it around on us. So you're, you're quiet, but I don't think it's your fault. Well, that's good. <laughs> we can that's hear you very well. Quiet anymore. I can hear you. Okay, can I start again? Can you all hear me now? Perfectly. Okay, very good. Well, beginning again, uh, we have another typical lot in Shangri-La that's very tiny, that's taken up by a lot of house 
and it's a 30 by 60 foot lot. The land has been surveyed by Bob Lucy at Dean's Point Survey, and you have a certified plot plan in your records with a recording with this project. So we're asking for a couple of simple uh, variances here. We understand that it's a two bedroom house that is necessary to have a deed, re re deed restriction. And we have indeed filed that deed restriction. It's been recorded and you have a receipt within your records there. And just a couple of small setback distances off the septic tank and the leaching area. Um, septic tank is five feet. And we had to configure this because of the small area within which to work and try to preserve that garden that's behind that stone wall that um, the clients had maintained over many years. And uh, in doing so, we've got a 15 foot variance from the bottom of the SAS, but there is indeed a septic tank in between. And then most of the SAS is 29 feet off the foundation because there's a jog in the foundation where there is a deck instead of foundation. So we're only addressing 16 feet that's open between the SAS and the um, foundation itself uh, that is just a three and a half foot stretch. So with these very porous soils, understand too that we poured 24 gallons of water into this soil system when we did the perk. And uh, we ended up with a six, it was gone in six minutes. We couldn't even conduct a, an effective perk within this. And it's very typical of Shangri-La soils. We've yet in 37 years of business have found anything that was greater than it, less than two per instance. So with that, we find that the uh, setbacks here are reasonable. Um, and we just like to go forth and install this project. I'd be very happy to address any questions that you might have or anything that Tony wants to add. Through the chair, Sandy, I have a a letter to the Board of Health from right. the homeowner. Does the homeowner want me to submit this to the board for their record? I think she sent it already to the board, Tony. So I don't know if Patrick has that within his records, but if he doesn't, you might want to read that letter to the board itself. Request from the homeowner. I have I have the letter that's on your letter and I don't we don't have anything else. No, Signed. this is the letter. Yeah, this is a letter from Mrs. Barrows. I think we have that. Yeah, okay. I understand we have um, a, a husband and wife living in this very tiny two bedroom house with five children. So they're most anxious to get out and uh, contribute to the town. They're both school teachers within the Wareham school system. So it's been a pleasure to work for them. Yeah, we're gonna I'd like to su submit this in to the record, please. We have for the homeowner. And it says the former property owner. Doesn't say the property owner on this letter. They closed last Friday. They moved last Friday. This is the current homeowner that addressed that letter. And as I say, they're very anxious to move. Former yeah. home Yeah. It, it says in the first sentence, so I'm a little confused. I haven't even read the rest. As a former property owner, 89 Plymouth Ave. It looks like it's coming from somebody who used to own the property. Not they home. moved last Friday. <laughs> I don't I, I'm sorry, I don't this is Joanne, it, the real estate agent. Hold on, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Joanne Barraby. I'm the real estate agent. Okay, but I was told that this, these are the people who presently own the property. They're current. They're in the process of moving out. So they, they don't sold the property. They technically have moved out. These new folks are waiting for the install. Okay, thank you. So that makes sense. They're hold back for this. Yes, it's all yes. done. Yep. Hold 
they did a hold back before they had an approved plan to bid yeah. to know exactly what it was going to cost to put in. Yeah, they put in extra. The, they require almost one and a half, usually one and a half. Right. Back yeah, they're it. all set with the funds. They just need to get it done. Yeah, that's commonplace. Very. Right. Usually with an approved plan, though, so you know. So and the hold back for the install usually okay. they, they rise during the installation. That they can't complete until this is completed. So I assume there's an existing failed system. That's why. Yes. And that's how they closed on the home because they had a Title V report, but it was a failed system. Right. And you have not seen this back. The letter? Yeah. No. Basically saying they're waiting for this to be able to go. Yeah. Yeah. And then it, but it's already Carbone Carbone is going to probably up. So they just can't occupy the, the house until there's a new system in place. So here's one of my questions. It's not really a, a technical one, but we need to be aware of the new ADU you know, laws and what's happening in that. Because I'm reading that it says it has a full base. So we have a deed restriction for a two bedroom, but just something, I don't know if it's pertinent to this case. It sounds like it's just one family, right? Who's moving in here? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. correct. And they're limited to the amount of bedrooms here because they're also listed within that public supply area from Wingham Water District. So yeah. this it can be added on to this system in the way of a uh, full, There's a full seller though. So I don't know how we're even gonna be able to lease that at all. We can't they're not policemen, yeah. so no, but what a help as far as violations. How do we right. police if they violate any another bedroom down there? I don't know. I mean, I think over the over the years, if somebody has an extra bedroom than that, yeah, and but it's found well, out. Here's what I'm saying the new law that's coming into place in February is gonna allow for this other unit from a small lot. Mm -hmm. It's still <laughs> subject to Title Five. And uh, so that would be a violation just for the right. for the homeowner know that, you know, putting that out there. They know that and it's in the deed restriction. If you flip through the deed restriction, it says at no point ever can there be another two bedroom addressed unless they come before yeah, you. Yeah, but that's state law. Things you know, change. There's it's no place for state law, It's the Wingham Water District as well. State law. Something we need to be aware of. Uh, okay. Um, just for the record, uh, Dr. Susan Joy has arrived. Um, any members? Well, right now, I think the problem is there's no dimensions to the property lines because there's no RLF stamp. So it doesn't meet the local requirements for which. So I don't have a problem with the design in general, assuming the property lines are the proper distance from the septic system. But we don't know that yet until a land surveyor is involved. There's a certified plot plan on file with this plan that we've duplicated with our plan. And if you put a scale to this, we have about 10 and a half feet to the lot line. We are a little bit reticent of putting any dimensions regarding lot lines on any of our engineered plans with two yeah, projects. I can't, I can't stamp anything with why well, I, I can stamp it, um, you know, if a land surveyor is also stamp is located on the plan. When they require right. our plans. Sure. Okay. Section nine, item twelve, the local regulations. Gotcha. Requires that. All right. So unless this other plan you're referencing shows the system and the setbacks to the property lines, which certified block plans typically don't show no, that. Right. It was probably done a few years ago or I don't know what does it show any setbacks to the any structures? Was done about a month ago. That plan is on file with you. We recorded that plan when we recorded everything with the Board of Health. There is a certified plot plan, as I say, by Doug by Bob Lucy. So we did done this work plan. before we sat down to do any design work. That should so be in why is this subject on the base plan that was done by a land surveyor. So he needs to tie this to the land yeah, surveyor. He, he won't do that. He won't. He won't do that. He won't no. certify that he'll certify this. He'll certify this. Uh, but when he did the certified plot plan, it's probably not. 
a separate system. Because it has to be. But you could certify this. That was what's in our reg. Yeah. So you could take this back and get it to be certified. All right. The only the only alternative I have is to ask for a variance to that, which draw a poll. So you want to ask for a variance on the proposed plan, but you're willing to have him do an RLS stamp on the ad bill? Is that what you're saying? Or are you saying something else? I'm, I'm, I'm saying I'm saying that. The only way to to not have a registered land surveyor stamp on the proposed plan is to ask for a variance to your regulation that requires it. If it requires it on the proposed plan, the as built plan hasn't been created yet. So, uh, if the as built plan needs to have setbacks for the final product to the property, that is something that the land surveyor can do. He just has to be a part of the inspection because he's going to need to actually locate exactly the edge of the leaching system to the property. Right. Well, we've had these regs in place for quite some time now. Um, I, I, years that, now. I, I think we're, I, I, we've required this for some years now. So it seems like I'm surprised they're not on it. Um, it seems like why don't we just you know, why don't you just take it back and get their own land so they be to have it done? Can that be a condition of the approved variance? That a, a plan be resubmitted with a land surveyor stamp on? Oh, probably. That seems reasonable. We've taken money out of Yeah. If it meets the setback. Right. Because right now there's no setback shown, so we don't know what the proposed distance is going to be. You know, all I can do is all I can do is ask to you use your scale or use my scale. That's the best I can do at this point. But if, if we can condition it, then and then it comes I, I think I think they're amenable <laughs> to that. It's going to take a little late work. Sure. And then when it, they come back in, maybe you have to re it, then you bring it in. As long as, it, as long as it's on here and our distances are right. And understand too that land surveyors can't do engineering work. So, you know, you're getting into a, a pretty sticky territory with that. That's why we've always submitted the plot plan done by a surveyor first and then based our plan upon that plan. But we didn't show any distances to the lot line because we'd be recommended for that. Yeah, but this is why right, that's what one we're going to have. We're going to have both stamps on the plan. One of the reasons why we're back both stamps so it's clear that somebody. Yeah, if that makes you happy, sure. Yeah. And I think it's, it's good clarity. Yeah. Well, it requires your 15 to 20 to show the distances from the proposed components to the property line. So if you can't do that, you have to have a land survey involved to stamp your plan to show that and demonstrate that. That's that's the whole point of showing dimensions on a plan so we can review it and see that they meet that bound. So the, 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 the little, through the chair, uh, here's a little history lesson. Yeah. Water registration has its own laws and requirements. Title V has its own. So what happens is they clash on this issue. Uh, the Title V regulations state that septic plans must be prepared by a registered professional engineer or a registered sanitarian. I do believe that the only time that they require a land surveyor is if you do ask for the variance of the property. The Board of Registration says any distances from a structure to a property line must be done by the land survey. So, you know, so we've got two different sets of laws butting heads on this issue. So the only way, in my opinion, that you can protect both is that you have a dual stamp on this plan. Exactly. Correct. Which is common practice. Most engineering companies have a land surveyor and an engineer, and the engineer or the sanitarian designs the septic, and the land surveyor but, does the base but, plan. But there have been plans accepted, not, not from this pool, but there are plans. But you can provide a Title V plan without a land surveyor stamp. Like, for instance, if we were talking about a house that was in the middle of a five-acre lot. Exactly. Like yeah. That, and where, you're comfortable putting your septic design a stamp on because you know that it's 
way more than 10 feet to the property. Yes. This is a tight, this but on the undersized lot, lots, that's a problem. I am, I am held to your regulation unless I can get a waiver, which I don't think I'm going to get based on the questions I'm getting from this board. <laughs> so I'd like to request the condition be placed that a plan prior to construction, that the plan be provided to the health department with both stamps on the plan. Yeah, that's fine. As long as when the surveyors out there were not encroaching under the ten feet, then we'll come back and add yeah. other variants. But I should. I mean, we should have we should have time to look at the plans. It shouldn't be the day that they're doing it, right? Yes. Um, well, the, the critical point is for the surveyor to locate in the field where the edge of the systems are and show the dimensions on the ad belt and then put a stamp on it. So he's certifying that the system went in. The adequate distance to the property line because if it didn't then you have to notify abutters and it, it gets the whole reason we adopted these rules for these undersized lots because of undersized lots where the engineer said it was 10 feet from the property line as title five says it's a minimum but then it was actually 10 feet over the property line so there was a huge lawsuit i had got involved with in lakeville from a previous engineer mr brant hayworth who miscalculated in his design plan and, and it was actually 20 feet off and caused a large problem. Please. So ever since then, you know, Title V says it's got to be 10 feet and he said it was 10 feet. He was just mistaken because he wasn't a land surveyor and he didn't do a real survey. So that's what we're trying to prevent, these kind of problems. I believe Mr. Perry has stated the magic word, plus, which nobody here wants to be involved in. Um, be that as it may, if you will allow us to have our variances on the condition that a plan be a, a plan, it, it has to comply with the regulation you just read. So I don't know if it says as built or proposed on the regulation. It says any plan. proposed or as built plan for yeah. lots less than 20,000 square feet. There you go. Um, so I'm, I'm willing to do it. I'm hoping to get an approval for the variances I'm requested and make that as a condition prior to and the disposal works application being. Hand it over to the installer. I'm perfectly fine with that if the board is. Entertain a motion. I just have a question. Is this going to satisfy the lender or the, the buyer? I don't know if anyone can answer that. If there's what for the buyer, excuse me. Well, I don't know if Joanne can answer this, but if there's a holdback and then there's conditions on the approval, is that going to release this money to these sellers? Oh, can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear okay. you. Okay. Yeah, the lender's all set. All that stuff is covered, taken care of. We just need to have the septic installed within the next 30 days. If not, okay. then it's just going to cost more money, but it still can be done. So Got we're it. just looking for the septic to get installed for this new young Insulation. woman who moved in. Okay. All right. Well, I don't want to hold it up. And Thank how, you. Yeah. How quickly is it? We probably calling them after this meeting okay. <laughs> and give them the heads up. Yeah, so I'll um, motion to approve um, the Title V variances um, as presented under A and B on the July 26th letter um, with the condition um, that we have. Um, I don't know, can you get it within the next week? Dan? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, just to help move along if these people need to do it within 30 days, we'll help out sellers however we can. Um, and that's it. With an expert. Hasbrook, Alistair, RLS, RLS, Dan. So this, the system's going in this week? No, 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 no. we need to see the plan for the plan. Oh, okay. The you're you're going to resubmit another plan. Okay. There, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we're going to get that. Yeah. Awesome. And assuming right. it meets the setbacks of Title right. five, assuming the minimum 10 foot setback. 10 foot. Now, the only thing that would mess up this is if it doesn't meet that. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. They'll have to come Hopefully, back. Hopefully, the survey goes well. well and then it would have to come back. back. It goes to me. Yeah. Uh, Jillian Morton? Yes. Good luck for you in contact. Um, yeah. And your health agent. Yeah. Call me with any questions. 
Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, a question back on the one that we, uh, the continuation session 7-Eleven. Um, did we get anywhere with them? With, or did they pay any of their fines? On the left? Yes. He paid it. I saw what he can do. Okay. Next is uh, discussion of Buffalo Boat Farm can have over a way bearing to work with. And um, is this something we can present to you without someone to get there? Or should we come prone it? We'd like to give them the opportunity to Right. So here, if you want to move back this one. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's move to. We need, a, we need a vote on number eight. Let's go ahead and have to get a little earlier. Um, skip over to um, eight for a second. It's a uh, discussion possible vote on fact that it's most stuff. That's all fine. We made it. Mistake. Uh, it was their first variant and not their second first variant. violation. So I motion. I mean, excuse me, by violation. Yeah. I'll motion to um, make the amount of the fine $1,000, not 2000 And I will second that. And I'll vote in favor. Jillian Morton, yes. And then Amy Um. Yeah. And then we'll go to discussion of buckle vote and hold on to that studio violation. Yeah. Um, Mr. McCarron, would you like to just well, we'll let Sam take it away? The first one. So I talked to Liz, who was here prior to her going to LA for a couple weeks, and I informed her that she, that her apprentice, could not tattoo without her being very supervised. And then I went in and it's funny, he was her apprentice. Was tattooed him when she was in LA and he had no idea that I had a conversation with her. And then Liz also said she didn't get the email, but it was the email that definitely had it. And my second issue was there's no hand thing at the Pierce Bank station. I do have pictures. That was a big discussion at one of our meetings. <laughs> With the hand yeah. Mm -hmm. We're not with her, but no, 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 I had not seen the email. It was not an actual conversation that had gone past. It was one singular email that said not to have the apprentice's tattoo. And I hadn't seen it until Sonny texted me and said that he was tattooing and Samantha came in. But I I, I should have been more up to date on my emails. It is my fault. But I had not actually seen it. So it's not like... I, uh, excuse me. I thought we had this conversation now some of the other meetings. Um, where when we were talking about the tattoo um, regs and all that, we had talks about what apprentice could and could not do. And I, uh, I don't remember ever hearing that an apprentice, I mean, I thought it always depended on what level an apprentice is at. I thought once I got to a certain level, they were okay to tattoo without me being there because they're doing perfect work. I think you have to be doing perfect work for at least a few months before you become a graduate at a tattoo artist. So who, who decides that? Both the health department and myself, I would think. The person teaching them and the health department. I think at some point they become, well, look at what the regs are, but at some point they become a fully certified tattoo artist. When they become a fully certified tattoo artist, then they're fully certified. And prior to that, like a medical student versus a doctor. I'm just saying it takes a few months for it to become absolutely perfect before it's like you just do one perfect tattoo and that's it. It's more of becoming perfect for a few months steadily 
doing perfect tattoos steadily for a few months rather than just in the beginning. Right, time. but I'm not, I'm not sure that is the um, the overseer's choice to decide when, you know, you can't choose that they're suddenly no longer a apprentice. No. They, they have to suddenly apply for being full. I realized that, and I knew they were still apprentices, but I just thought that they were at the point where they were able to do tattoos without me having to be there. I hadn't seen the email that she had sent, and I really didn't think that we were doing anything wrong. If you I had, had known, a question prior to me telling you that, so you didn't want to know the answer to you know, assisting clients at all? Because you asked me that prior, and I answered you with that answer also about something. I had to ask you about Sienna or piercing apprentice. And then I didn't even look at the response until a week later. I hadn't seen it in time. So I don't know if there's a specific, um, you know, how I'm sure every educator decides when a student is ready to move on or not. But that's not necessarily. The rule, you, they still have to be a fully certified tattoo artist to be able to do stuff on their own. Um, and on them. Um, you know what page that's on? Mm -hmm. Here it is on page. This is the one from 2019 from the old. If I'm on page 11 or 14 in our books. Right, I understand. These are the old ones. These are current. These are from April 17, 2019. And you want the old? Oh, no, no. These are current. These are current, but we are uh, trying to update. Um, and this, um, an apprenticeship program lasts either two years. For 2,400 hours. So, how long has that person worked with you? With us, I mean, Sonny was the person that was brought, and he's been with us since I don't know the exact month, I, April. But he's been tattooing for about two years before that. So, he has a lot of prior experience. His tattoos come out perfect every single time. But he is still an apprentice and not a full. He's trying to get his apprentice license like any day now. We're, he's, I understand that you guys have had been changing your rules and everything. We have four artists right now who are trying to either level up or get new licenses for apprentice, like for new licenses. So, artists. So, any day now, we're hoping. I personally think it's it, it, it's tough to let a tattoo uh, kind of work on their own without supervision. I don't know what any other board members think and, and what what in the past has been the it's been a it's been an ongoing issue it seems with part of the changes in the, the, the word that we have coming for it. Um, Clearly lays it out, provides clear restrictions. So hopefully that's something we can rectify in the next set of regulations. Currently, sorry, there was a practice really different. And sounds like you spoke to her in person too. Not just an email, but you didn't want to be out. That's it. I tried to call her after it happened and she didn't want to answer. But you sent an email, but didn't speak with her that he was not allowed to. No, I just answered her email when she emailed me last uh, year on the 15th. We emailed. Which was compared to when she was coming or going? Almost. 
I don't know exactly when she left, but I would imagine she emailed me prior to leaving. Okay. Asked me about if Sienna can assist the jewelry. And you responded no. No. Right. I did not respond no. There's nothing in our right thing that you can help. So I responded that she could help with jewelry. Oh, with jewelry, but, but no. Correct. Correct. You could not be tattooed. And then on the 24th, he was with others. And so, and then you say that you never got that email. I did get the email. It was my negligence, to be perfectly honest. I hadn't seen it in time. I hadn't seen it. I didn't know anything of the tattoo artist not being allowed to tattoo. I thought, like, according to their skill level, it was more based on my judgment. I didn't realize that it was that strict, to be honest. Um, so I thought everything was okay. I hadn't seen the email. And then after um, Samantha came in, that was when I became aware that things were going on. Anyone have any thoughts? And I can just put the light the fact that this is a business. This is your, you know, it's important to have the people under you. You got it. As we always say to the people for the tobacco violations and stuff, you know. Um, it looks like we at least have to under the current regs do a hundred dollar violation fine, correct? And um, and then our new regs coming in, I think it's bumped up quite a bit, right? Is the mm -hmm. second offense two grand? So, or even not or, being able yeah, to, yeah, I'm just fine. I think she gets it now. I just encourage you if you have a copy of the regs, especially the new regs that we're doing, to go through that. And if it's a second offense, I mean. I don't know what the rest of the board would do, but it's kind of like you're on notice now. And I'll be honest, I like, I feel like I should know, and I do know everything I need to know about owning a shop and what the regulations are. I mean, there's a lot of regulations for all aspects of it. Um, but is there somewhere that I can find everything that I can just read? You can always it? stop by the office and get it. You can print it out, I assume. Uh, and yeah, you can from, you print it out. Uh, yeah. I've just never seen anything. But about the like thing, and then there's another yeah. problem with so was that so, two then? So that's two. So there's also a sink issue. Um, and that you, you were here that day, I'm pretty sure, as we discussed quite in depth somebody who wanted to have portable sink. Um, I, was here that day. I think you were. Where yeah, I was first and I left. I, I, I couldn't swear to it. Um, but we had a long discussion of uh, potential of using portable things instead of regular things. Um, and I, would, I think owning uh, your own business and, and having people under you is always better to take care of the fun of part of your education than, than not. I mean, if you're not going to be there, I mean, somebody who's in the shouldn't be doing it. They don't have a license. But like in a hospital, having somebody do surgery without the citizen there and you know, not that. And some of the things that people have to do are sort of quite, quite personal spots. Um, yeah, there was a little. I can come back in for some program. Yeah. There, yeah. there is once. Yeah, so I motioned the. Issue two violations under our current um, bylaw, um, which would be the hundred dollars, and then the second one two hundred, so two hundred, three hundred, three hundred total uh, violation. Just hold on, um, just with that caveat and that warning. Um, you know, if it's a third one, then we're going to what three grand and a possible suspension of permit thereafter. Yeah, I don't know what the I you know, yeah. usually I want I'm businesses right to thrive here and fine. And it's 100 for the first, 200 for the second, 300 for the third offense, and possibly suspension of the permit for us. But if she does a violation, we already have these new regulations. Third offense is either two grand or an impossible revocation of life, which is invaluable, right? So, so I did that again. Okay. Morton, yes. And Amy Dean, yes. Um, we are, just for all of those, uh, you know, um, we are. Looking to upgrade um, for clarity for everyone. Um, I think the thought is that we want to be as educated as possible and run as tight shop as possible and, and do good for your folks, your clients. 
it's hard to be in a, in a different state uh, overseeing people. I would warn you of that. Any other comments on this? Do we need a hand sync at that station? I've already, oh, as and long as everything is okay, I've already fixed that. So we're going to move the stations and put a hand seat in yes. like tomorrow. Um, we have a lot of renovations that we want to do just to make the shop better in general, but it's going to be permitted and we won't do any more piercings until the new sink is in. Yeah, of course. Then you'll go check it out. Okay, thank you for coming. Thank you. Yes, the travel here. No, the travel here is still back there. It's not a point of order. The discussion is about the water life of those. There's a point of order. Do you yeah. want to just do both the continuum number three and number five? Yeah, I don't have to go on just before three, three number number three and number five. You have to both the continuum. Sure, I would entertain a motion. Motion to um, I'll make them separate. Motion to um, continue discussion and possible vote on Seven Eleven tobacco violation appeal till next meeting. And I second the roll call vote. Jillian Morton, yes. Maybe. And then I motion to um, continue uh, the discussion and possible vote regarding 10 Cabo Verde Way variance request until next hearing. And I think I have no problem. Jillian Morton, yes. Maybe. Yeah. Just as an aside, are they getting notice about these? They do, yeah. Okay, well, I, you know. The engineers sometimes get. Yeah, but if I, next time, I, I don't know if I want to grant a continuance. I'm trying to be a hard right, yeah, but it's so like, it should be on the next thing, which is the second, um, yeah, and put on it. Um, and then now to seven, the discussion about the water rise on the body at COVID infected in the permit. And the is there, Elias. Hello. Hi there. Would, would you like to present? Uh, yeah. So I'm Elias Gonzalez, um, also a tattoo artist. I was looking to uh, open a shop um, and then also in the process get my license. Everything yes. appears to be in order. There's a Wrong in your packets for the floor plan. Um, all the required documentation is attached. And I see that they uh, we presented four floor plans. Sorry, did you ask if I presented the floor plan? Yeah, you, I see that you presented a floor plan. Was that yeah. was any issue? Did you guys go in and take a look at the spot? Or? No, we haven't. We'll, we'll do a pre-opening inspection once he has the license. I, I know the office uh, because I know the doctor. I believe this is the spot that wants to rent space to him. Yep. That's correct. Dr. Zach Noon's office in town. So generally, it is a typical doctor's office, uh, doctor office, and I believe there are sinks in all the rooms. Yep. Um, and um, so it's, it, it's a relatively professional looking spot. Um, and your, your paperwork certainly looked in order. Where would tell us a little bit about yourself and where you've practiced before, if you would, for everybody? Um, yeah, so I initially started my apprenticeship in Rhode Island in North Providence at Ink Me Tattoos. Um, it was, I believe, about a year and a half to almost two years apprenticeship. And then I moved from there to uh, Buzzards Bay at Diamond Mine Tattoos. So was there for another two years. 
while also working um, simultaneously at Whaling City Tattoos in New Bedford um, for another two years. So I've I've been to a few shops. I've had a few licenses um, and then now trying to open up my own. Okay. Do you guys have any questions? I would understand a motion. Motion to um, vote Elias Gonzalez's body art um, and give him the practitioner's permit. Thank you, Glenn. All those in favor? Jelly Morton, yes. And you need another one for the establishment. And, okay. um, and I also motion um, for a vote to have the establishment for a job, right? 40 for a job. 40 church at unit 4012C. Um, and the name, is it Tuna Tattoo Studio? Allow that to be a um, body art facility. And then I second that. And the roll call vote. Is there any more in yes? And then you can do it. You're all set. Okay. Uh, good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank and you. look up, please uh, pay attention in the next month or so. We are changing our regs. So, okay. Uh, uh, we're in the process so there's no confusion in the future um, with what is expected as the wording is better. Um, and uh, we're also trying to come up with something that's reasonable about for education for people and potentially even further education over the years. Um, so just uh, you can check back in with board in a month or two. Okay. Take care. Thank you so much. You as well. Um, I have to leave early for a prior engagement motion to have Larry move up in my stead. And I would second that. Roll call vote. Julian Morton, yes. And Amy, I think I know. Thank you. Do you want to have time to send about her? Um, well, so then next on is further discussion and vote in general of body art establishment practicing piercing and tackling regulation in general for our rights. Uh, we've discussed this a few times. Welcome back. Um, and um, so I think in our rights as pointed out they were really as clear as they could be for folks that are um apprentices apprentices and uh what the regs are and um how long they need to do this and what kind of supervision they need. Um, so I think we're trying to up and make that wording clearer. Um, and then also the violations if there are problems. Um, and our violations um, were quite low. The financial hundred dollars isn't going to affect many people, so um, we were uh, looking at increasing the fines. Another revision in your packet. Mm -hmm. uh, the green highlights were from the previous packet. The yellow ones are the new changes. Okay. We were talking. With it was the update from your comments in the previous. So I just made a revision to reflect those with a few caveats. And we have, I'm sorry, your name is. Uh, my name is Jess Braley. I own Gray with the Scout Ramble. She's been listening in and I'm making comments on some of our chat boards. It's been very helpful. Thank you. Um, so I think the difference in the fine structure was the uh, first offense 500, second 1,000. We're going to spend 2000. Um, and there was also a question about uh, liability. Still have a question about that. Yeah. That is something we can require. 
I pose that question um, to who people on this place. And what is the requirement for you is for having insurance? Is there a requirement? I you know? carry a personal requirement that I would like to not have my business taken away from me in a lawsuit. So I carry, I think it's two and four months. Okay. But that's there's also a requirement on me per my lease. It doesn't have it. I was going to say different, different scenarios require different insurance. About 100%. Both leases will require it. Uh, if you establish an LLC to start your business, that requires at least one place two million. That's a mass or mass regulation you see more where it's at number twenty four. Um, so there's different scenarios that already require you to have those insurances. I'm just questioning if we can require those in, a, in addition. You have to be sure in case somebody. I just want to know. And and who requires it now? Separate from the state or? I don't know if I'm actually required by anybody other than my lease. I just do it on my own. Uh, so would be nice. Yeah, generally it's not in any of the regs that I've reviewed. I haven't seen it anywhere else either. But I think that's just a fact of there's a few other entities prior before them getting to us that require them to have insurance anyways. So whether you're leasing or you purchase a building, they're going to require you to have insurance through your you know, your mortgage or whatever. There's a few entities prior to getting to us that are going to require you to have different insurance anyways. So on our new um, proposed regs, um, 11, page 12 of 16, um, may do different with uh, an apprentice shall not form any form of body or body operated work on a client or another person without direct supervision of a master practitioner. Um, and below that, what is a master practitioner? A master practitioner shall have a minimum of five years of experience in the field of body art they plan on teaching. Uh, master practitioner will have a permit to perform body art in town of Wareham for at least two years. And a master practitioner will hold a permit for body art practitioner. The number of apprentices seem to jump around the whole group's version you read. I just one seems to be a yeah, one per is well, like always. Yeah. Anywhere else I've always worked. Yeah. Some places issue, I think, a similar Rhode Island one, but I think I've seen three. Okay. Oh, that's up above. Yeah. I'm sorry, we can find that again. That's what we have before. No, I was just reading through and I came up with my thoughts, but I will have to put these together. The number of practitioners always seem to be in here between regulations. One seems to be added. One apprentice for how many years? One apprentice for a practice. Where, where is that written? So what I'm number five. Uh, top of the second page. I don't know what page. Top of the uh, page. Well. Page three. Number five. More than one act of So that I mean that's that's how it's always worked where I've been. Uh, my only question is then D one that it's two per establishment. We're gonna shoot for, or one per artist. It would be I just put two per establishment because you could have more than one master practitioner. I mean, you, well, right now as I have two master practitioners, me and Emily. If I hired a third, in theory, they wouldn't be able to have an apprentice if correct D one. Because we'd already have two. We'd be worried about space and time. Well, overtime shouldn't be a problem. But, but then, yeah, it could it'd be one on one always. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could we see that changing that. if, if yeah. um, I mean, say one person works 30 hours a week yeah. and the other 30 and one works on a Saturday, some work on the evenings, that you could have one for one would seem reasonable to me if you had a master practitioner. You know, some people might work in the morning and some people might work in the afternoon. Yes, Sam. So if you and that should be clarified then just in writing. If you have somebody waiting to come to a meeting that wants to see So then we should clarify if that's too much for somebody that says only one at a time. One of either one. Each master practitioner can have one 
um, alert tattoos predator or or a piercer at a time, but not both. It just has one active apprentice. It doesn't care which one. Yeah. Okay. It's like, but if you can have one active apprentice, whether that's tattoo or vision, no. So the B body artists shall have no more than two to we yeah, we should have that. I would just take if if, if okay. each master practitioner can only have one, then that just goes away. Now that I'm reading it, yeah, again. Right. Yep. And and who records? That's what this is saying. but not to the hours. So they're required to record the amount of hours that they have worked. Correct. The difference between a body art practitioner and a master practitioner? Five years experience. Five years experience. So there's three different types of practitioners. It's the apprentice, the practitioner, and the master. You got it. But the definition, shouldn't they have a definition of a master? Right at the beginning? Yes. I didn't see a master in that. So the apprentice. It's under body art practitioner, apprentice. Says, uh, I don't know, that's the so we should add to that master. Yeah, There's an environmental health inspector for the town of Abington who's also a body at practitioner. He came back from the inspector's course. Pennsylvania, I believe it was. He says it was a really good course. They have really good regulations in that state. And he's thinking about presenting them to the Massachusetts Department of Public Health to be model regulations for this state. Oh. He, he's got both sides of the fence because he's been an environmental health inspector for years, but he's also a tattoo artist. So he has a real good perspective. Uh, he said, "If anyone, if, if we we're interested, if you want to come down here, answer any questions." He said he was it was the best course he's ever had, and it talks about all the different courses and things that we've been discussing about having some consistency with in courses, training, and all that. Did he make any talk about um, which courses? Um... He just got back like a few days ago, so he said he's going to. He wanted to review the whole packet and send it to us with his comments and recommendations on how it could apply to Massachusetts. Nice but if we wanted him to come and visit, sit down for a discussion at a meeting, he'd be willing to do that too. Oh. But at the start, I was going to get the forward the documents to anybody who wants. If you wanted to come online, even or he wants to bring them either way, I think it'd be really interesting. I think for me, the big issues are the what training education is required. Mm -hmm. So, as I was going over, just to come back to what we were talking about as far as skin courses go, I went over and did some research. There are only three offered in the entire state. Um, and one of the things I want to mention that I think was getting glossed over, while this is a component of our education in this, um, nothing in these courses, particularly the skin course in particular, changes or is um, redundant to something that would be taught in our continuing edit, like BDP, blood board pathogens for our state and CPR every year. Um, it's also not being taught. The master uh, practitioners and uh, whether tattoo artists or piercer, they're the ones teaching you depth of tattoo, where you're avoiding veins, where you're avoiding things. None of that's actually taught in this course, the skin course. That's Anything that's taught in those is being taught in BPP or first aid, and it's being redundantly taught in the skin course. Things like diabetes, things like that. When you get to something like MRSA, which would be a skin disease that, so when I started tattooing, that wasn't very prevalent. As it became prevalent, that was updated immediately in our first aid and blood blood pathogens, the next following cycle, which we do every year. Um, I just wanted to make sure that that point was understood, that it, it comes down to the master practitioners teaching the actual anatomy and physiology of piercing and tattooing versus this course, which is just teaching you don't tattoo over broken skin, diabetics have problems healing lower limbs, 
and really kind of simple stuff like that, as opposed to MRSA updates or um, staff infection updates or how to uh, use sterile technique for certain things. So. And with only three in the state, you said? Three in the state. Well, these are skin, so this is different skin courses. So we've had time back and forth in our ranks in states that you should have a college equivalent course. And many college equivalent courses, when I did was a full year course with, you know, and it was quite extensive and probably nowadays quite expensive. But Patrick and I had a conversation of what other courses are out there that are anatomy. Um, and there are some local colleges that have, you know, first, say one semester anatomy course type. Um, and it, it you know, that is that an appropriate course? I dug into those a couple more. Our mm -hmm. two closest, four C's and um, for Georgia State. Um, they're all locked behind either locking yourself into finishing a degree there or there's a series of prerequisites to get into it. Um, it's usually a second a second year behind bio one. Which is, which is. If you're eligible to take bio one. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was, so I was able to get there. But it, it becomes a huge, I mean, I, I think, I personally would like to see people have more training than a one day course. But do you need a full? By the time they get to take the anatomy course, they're anywhere from three to six hours deep before they even get there. So right. that's potentially. And a thousand hours of actual training. When we talked about the state doing it and the state hasn't done it yet. I think 2008 was the last time they put the recommendation. So maybe they'll change, and if they change, they might have to have a course for everyone. That's, I know Ruth uh, taught the Quincy course. She helped write the rules. So Ruth taught the Quincy course until I think 2015 when she retired. They're redoing it now. I think it's Caitlin Kirby who's doing it up there. Um, they're the only one of the three courses taught by a public health department. Um, they're taught by, according to this, they're taught by uh, Quincy Health Department, the Medical Dermatology Residence at Boston University, uh, Department of Dermatology, and then it goes on to mention the actual doctor's names. Um, Zaza Inc.'s Massachusetts Tattoo Skin Course is taught by an artist, uh, and then the Save H Life, which is a business that's now dedicated to basically teaching this course. Um, the Quincy Health Department course. Oh, is that a four? Uh, there is well, one in bio. So it's bio, skin, and anatomy. And That's the Save Each Life. Save Each Life. Save Each Life. One year. That's in Greenfield. It's in West Vista. I put those Greenfield maps on the certificate. Springfield on this one. This is their website. Yeah. Yeah, same people. It may depend on which, okay, if you take it online versus you take it in person, that may be the only difference. As a practitioner, what do you think would be appropriate for everyone to have if it were available? How much more than just a skin cord? I don't necessarily think we need more than a skin course because I think we get that other education in our yearly stuff. And I think the rest of it's rely being taught by me. And I keep up all of the stuff that, you know what I mean? All of my education is dependent on me to teach them. Right. And, that, and for me, that's always a problem because, you know, so, you know it depends who that master artist. Um, but I wouldn't be able to have a successful business or be an artist for 17 years if I wasn't good at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, yes, but I'm not sure that every master artist is a great teacher. Right. Mm -hmm. Sure, but the apprenticeship is how we've always learned in this industry since the beginning of time. And we're talking hundreds of years. And that's of how you saw it in medicine, too. You know, when you used to go to medical school and you just used to learn it. The next person. Well, I would hope somebody cutting into me had the information, but I'm we're just doing skin. I'm not going through their skin. The tattoo that the, the, uh, body piercing is. Sure, sure. But that's why body piercing has a different standard than. Oh, 
but what's the difference in our education for the tattoo artist? The tattoo is the skin towards piercing the physical anatomy requirement. Yes, it is. But, or at least that's right. No, but, there's no full point for them to. For which one? So for the for the piercing, how is how is our I don't see it on here the difference. But that's being taught, like I said before, none of that's being taught in this course no. or or in the anatomy and physiology course. No. I could go to college and they're not going to teach me how to pierce. I'm going to page fourteen. Okay. Uh, e. Mm -hmm. One C. Um. This is specific for the anatomy requirements, whereas D, which is just the tattooing, is the skin. Okay. Yeah. And it also leaves the board the option for somebody with a lengthy bit of experience and a little training under their belt from a, a course for the board to approve that. In a second. So ideally, which we haven't done in the past, is much just really looking at the differences between attached doing education versus stop doing or piercing versus tattooing. Um, it's too bad there's not more courses out there if they're mine. I think, you know, you and I maybe think, other people that are great educators, um, but not everybody, even though you might be great at what you do, you're not necessarily a good educator. Um, we know that, in, you know, medicine in any field, and, and so it would be nice to know that for. I don't think that these courses necessarily will ever answer that. You, you know what I mean? Because they're not, these just teach you not to tattoo over broken skin or what life looks like or right. what, you know, that stuff versus actually the act of tattooing, which when you do medical comparisons of that, if you're being taught how to do surgery, I'd be teaching you how to do surgery, not how to sterilize your foot, which is what this is. You know what I mean? Sure. Any other comments from the board? Oh, I do have one other thing. Matt Tannis, who has run um, Board of Health everywhere from Dighton, he's working up near Rentham now, um, West Bridgewater, Marshfield, a whole bunch of other. He has also volunteered to come in and speak not only about this stuff, but about uh, and how other towns generally deal with it, but also the guest artist uh, clause and how a bunch of other towns deal with it. Matt's been pretty good about uh, staying on top of that for. 50 years I've known him. It's semi common. It's not unheard of to have an artist come from another place. Mm -hmm. Have them take it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you think, Larry? Can you have the uh, recommended having this guy come before us before we, and then we'll have all of our members here? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm nowhere an expert in this, so I, it's nice to have the legal, the medical, and practical, and everybody's input if we're going to be, unless the state is coming up with something better, which they haven't so they're far. Not, they're not, not really. So these are looking much better than they were. So we bring them and maybe have. Yeah, I can forward it to anybody, and if anybody else wants yeah, it, we can. Let's forward it, and then maybe the next time when we're looking at maybe the next time the vote actually happens. Mm -hmm. We could pull in whatever we see that there's something else that we, that's better than what we have. Sure. Yeah, if you can vote to continue it, I have a couple of corrections I can make anyway, so we can bring that with the latter definition and remove a couple of things that were redundant and go from there. I would entertain the. Okay, thanks. Welcome. Entertain a motion, Larry, to continue. Uh, I make a motion to continue the discussion for the body art uh, regulations. 
or hold the next meeting. Uh, so, get the facts. And I will second that. I will call vote. I, I'm on a yes. And you got the, the definition, the master definition? Yes, no, I, I Okay. Otherwise, it's hoping it's better. Um, thank you for participating in all of our discussion. Thank you. I will see you all the first time we'll next time. Yes, please. Anything on the health agents report? Uh, nothing. The only two things I would give you uh, a complete version of it. We have completed beach water testing for the season. Um, it went mostly smooth this year. Uh, um, and as far as disease reporting, just pushing out the mosquito issue. Um, that's goes on. Same that again. Where you're approved, um, post sprays and all that jazz. Don't go to the stands, but even during the daytime. Oh, any feedback about the spraying that they did and what where I am? So you never heard it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the plane go over my house. It. I'm just curious if they had any data to back up how effective it was. Right. Maybe it's too early trying. It's really it's really looked like a little corner of the house and it and you think it's like 500 feet, feet short of my house. Well, they won't go yeah. anywhere near the marshes, so they stay away precise. from the waterway. Very precise. And with the GPS. Um, so, on infectious disease report, nothing, but we, you know, nothing mosquito, is. stay away from mosquitoes. <laughs> covered for mosquito repellent. Um, yeah, and flu season is coming. You can get your flu shot. I think October is probably the best time for most people. If you're going to get two in a year, you get some in September and then some again in December or January for those people that are extra at risk, the younger kids or the COPD or um, um, any announcements? Something about a new bird flu. Really about that? 85 or something? Every year there's a new number. Yeah. We'll see. It, it's frequently in the flyway whether it makes it all the way up. Any other announcements? Uh, approval meeting minutes from August 7th. Any motion? Um, make a motion to approve the minutes um, August 7th. And I second that and roll call vote. I launched sorry, yes. Uh, yeah. Can you say a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I second that. Okay. <laughs> I want to try yes to adjourn. Thank you all. Thank you. Perfect timing.